Father, we invite you in this place today. We say you get the glory, God. You get the honor. You get the praise. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Could you just sing your song to the Lord? We welcome you here, Jesus. We welcome you here.
Forever change, 
I just want us to take about 30 or 60 seconds and we're going to give God some crazy praise. And I know if you're from up north, this little bit of snow is nothing to you. But for some of us southerners, <laughs> making it through the snow is a big deal, but it's only rain now. But you know, God will make a way no matter the obstacle, no matter the adversary. Our God is greater. Hallelujah. He has all power in heaven and in earth through the power of the cross. And we're just going to declare his goodness from one generation to the next. So I just want us to take about 30, 60 seconds and just give God some crazy praise. Hallelujah. Praise him. Hallelujah. Like the battle is over. Praise him. Hallelujah. Like you've ever already stepped onto the mountaintop of victory. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready? I'm going to blow my show far and then I just want you to shout. Amen. Are y'all ready? Let me know if you're ready right now. Okay, here we go. thankfulness is a form of praise and it's powerful hallelujah we enter into his gates with a thankful heart full of gratitude father i thank you for your faithfulness i thank you for your goodness thank you for your love for your mercy for your grace for salvation for abundant life for eternal life for zoe life for god life thank you jesus that you redeemed me that you saved me you translated me from the kingdom of darkness to, to the kingdom of light, the kingdom of your dear son. Thank you, Father. We love you. We love you with our whole heart. We honor you today. We worship you. God, we need you. We look to you. We depend upon you, God. We seek you today. We ask you, won't you meet us? Bring us, Lord through the gift of faith, boldly before your throne of grace. God, to encounter you. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Shake us free from religion and ritual and cause us to arise to the reality of knowing the one true living God through the power of the Holy Ghost. Send your fire today, Lord. Send your anointing today, Lord. God, to break every yoke, to break every chain, to set every captive free. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God, we thank you today, hallelujah, for freedom in victory through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Just put your hands together all across this room. If you're watching online, hallelujah. Just shock someone. Just shout out a shout of praise somewhere. Hallelujah. Come on. Hey, they already say you're radical. Why not prove them right today? Come on, let's give them some radical praise. Hallelujah. service we ask you to have your way prepare our hearts let our hearts be fertile soil to receive the seed of the word god i pray you would quicken us with faith god that we would become everything you've called us to be let today be a day of miracles a day of victory let today be a day of transformation god we don't want to be the same 
the same as we were when we came in or watched online. But God, let your all-powerful, mighty word bear fruit that remains, eternal fruit. Make us more like Jesus, God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you're just and you're faithful to forgive us. Thank you, Lord, as we humble ourselves and seek your face, as we pray, and Lord, as we turn from our wicked ways, Lord, you promise to heal our land. God, we ask you to begin healing uh, with us individually and personally in our families, in our homes, in our churches, God, and throughout the nation. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, come right now. Holy Spirit, come right now. We need your presence. We need your power. We need you, Lord. Have your way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen. Can we bless him one more time? Hallelujah. He is awesome. We serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say a quick prayer right now. I know um, from time to time I hear of different individuals who might be just uh, <clears throat> facing health challenges, especially this time of year and all the other things going on with the pandemic and just everything. We just want to say a quick word of prayer. I ask you to lift up holy hands to the Lord if you can with me right now. Father, we join together in faith in one place in one accord, unified. Two or three gathered in your name. Two or three or more touching anything. And Lord, we touch any who are infirmed or injured or sick, any in the hospital, any family, friends, or loved ones, anyone watching online or maybe even in this sanctuary right now who need a touch of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we decree the word of the Lord that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. God, we command every symptom to go. And we break the curse of death of the enemy. We declare, Jesus, that you are the resurrection and the life. And we command every infirmity, every disease, every sickness to go now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We plead the power of the blood of the Lamb, the authority of the cross, and the resurrection of the living God right now to remove every intruder, every thing that would trespass within the body of Christ. We thank you for the victory in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it and receive it, give God praise for the healing right now. He is a healing God. Oh, hallelujah. Jehovah Rapha, Lord God, our healer. Amen. I want to welcome you all to the Rock Church. My name is Pastor John. And before you're seated, can you give someone maybe an air high five or an air hug? Amen. And I can't wait for the day for the eradication of the coronavirus off the face of the earth. Amen. And you may be seated. It's so good to worship with you today. Let's praise the Lord for, uh, amen, Brother G and this wonderful, amazing worship team. And all of our media folks, you guys are awesome too. We love all of our amazing team here at the Rock Church. I call them the dream team. Amen. And you should see them in action in the drive-in service. I know last week we had to cancel because of inclement weather. And I mentioned that uh, to, to Brother Garner here that we were going to um, possibly doing a service in snow soon. Uh, and you got to be careful what you say. You know, life and death are in the power of the tongue. We were having clear, it was cold, but we had sunshine, and now uh, all this snow showed up. So let's decree a new thing, Brother G. Let's say we're going to have some uh, very pleasant, unseasonably warm weather, and we're going to think it's spring, even though it's wintertime, and we're going to be, amen, praising the Lord. So I know a lot of folks are watching online right now who usually come to our drive-in service, uh, amen, and then others maybe because of snow. Uh, if you haven't really looked, though, let me just point this out. It's kind of raining, and most of the roads are really cleared up. So it's, it's a blessing, really, in a way. Uh, I guess I won't be able to build my snowman, but uh, little Asia, my five-year-old, said, Dad, let's build a snowman. <laughs> and so we go outside, and, uh, you know, one of the first things she does, she... Uh, creates a snowball. She pelts me. Brother Tony, my five-year-old, pelts me with a snowball. Uh, <clears throat> but then, uh, I had Brother G, I had to show her what time it was because, you know, uh, with my aim. Don't worry, I didn't hit her hard with a snowball, but actually I missed. But we had so much fun. Uh, but anyways, it is pretty to look at, but, uh, you know, I'm not really a fan of cleaning at all. But uh, what a blessing it is that you are here in the house of the Lord, praise God, and uh, to worship with us. And you picked a really great day because today, uh, one of our dear friends uh, and one of our favorite preachers, Brother Tony Suarez, is here to minister the word. And he's going to be coming up here in just a second. Now, I know we've switched up our format uh, because of having the drive-in service afterwards. And so, you know, at the end of service now is when we worship the Lord with our offerings. So we give our tithes and offerings at the end. 
We've also been doing our announcements at the end of service after the preaching of the word. And we're going to still kind of stick with that and hold with that. But we do have one very, very special and important announcement to make today and an acknowledgement we want to make. Amen. And I'm going to ask Bishop Ann Jimenez to come up. Give her a great big hand. The mother of the house, the founder of the Rock Church, the bishop of the Rock Ministerial Fellowship. Come on, let's honor this mother in Zion. What a blessing. Uh, my pastor, Bishop Ann Jimenez. Good morning, everybody. Thank God it didn't snow. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. You know, I uh, preached last week about a lamb for a household, and I talked about how God promised me my house. And uh, he has been very, he is faithful, always faithful. And uh, I want uh, to introduce this morning, some of you know my nephew, Tim Campbell, uh, senior. I want to ask Tim, start making your way on up here. Uh, I want to, those of you that don't, uh, Tim Campbell, senior, used to be here on staff here. But way before that, he came to live with me when he was 11 years old and uh, grew up in our house, went to Elam Bible School, and um, God just set him on fire, put the word in his heart, called him to the ministry. I'll never forget, I'll have to tell this, the first uh, he came and well, John and I went out to the airport, and we saw this young boy come walking towards us with a bomber jacket on and his hands, and he's walking this way. And I looked at John, and I said, here comes trouble. <laughs> I want to introduce trouble to you today. <laughs> I'm so proud of Tim and his boys that are with him today. Uh, where are you? Stand up, Jonathan and Timothy Campbell. And Tim's wife, Brittany, is with us. And I'm so proud of them all. Uh, they've just made me proud. But uh, Tim was here, and he preached his older brother's funeral, really a memorial service yesterday. And uh, God is faithful. God told me every one of them, every one of them. So here's another one of them. I want to introduce you, Tim Campbell, senior pastor. Well, praise the Lord. It's always good to be home. My uh, son, Tim, leaned over after worship and said, this will always be home, and uh, it is always home. A little hard to see uh, friends uh, with uh, the masks on, but, uh, but it, is, it is good to be here. I am down in um, sunny Florida, so when I fly back tonight and I'm out walking my dog, I just want you to know I'll be having shorts and flip-flops on tonight. So I just say that as a little enticement if you want to come to Florida but uh, it, is, it is always good, and, uh, you know, in God's providence, I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to share at my brother's funeral, and he knew the Lord, and he was really, uh, his coming to Virginia Beach uh, back in uh, probably 72 uh, was because of uh, Bishop Ann, and uh, he, he was just out of high school, and she seemed to have a ministry with wayward teens, and uh, that was her beginning, but his coming and living and growing a family here in Virginia Beach uh, all began back then, and we've all seemed to kind of follow, but I stuck the longest. I, I was here the longest, but, uh, but again, it is uh, good to be home. I want to share you a scripture. It's in uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm 1831, and it says, For who is God but the Lord, and who is a rock except our God? You know, the scripture that... Uh, Used to be on the wall. I don't know if it's still there with the curtains and all, but Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock, the Lord Jesus said, he, what? Not us. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not do what? They won't make it. They won't last. And you know, regardless of all that is going on right now, God is still building his church. He is the rock. There is no other. He's a solid foundation. The church is strong. We're strong. And his plans and purposes are right on target. Amen? So be encouraged today that he is the rock and be on the rock. It's not prudential. It's the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, be encouraged in the Lord today. God has good things ahead. He's only getting started. Remember, he's an eternal God. So he's just barely warming it up, right? So God bless you. It's good to be here. Amen. Thanks, Tim. Love you. I won't see you again, will I? No, no. All right. Love you too. Okay. Amen. 
Well, I'm proud of my boys, all of them. So let's, uh, Brother John, are you coming now to introduce Brother Tony? There's a special song. All right. Come on, girls. Come on, boy, girls. <laughs> Amen.
destroy the works of the devil. How many of you are thankful today that through Christ, the devil is under your feet. He has made you more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Can we give him praise for the victory today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are victorious, mighty God. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But while you're standing, or if you could join with us, if you're not standing, we want to honor the Word of God and the man of God the Lord has sent to minister today. Can we put our hands together? Let's give a real warm welcome to the Rock Church of Virginia Beach to our dear friend, Evangelist Tony Suarez. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. This is a, if the, Sister Diane, if you put the camera right on that. That's an x-ray of a pastor from Augusta, Georgia, April Mitchum. I was scheduled to preach for them. Is that on? Well, it's not on the screen, but if you can see it. Sorry, I didn't. I just got spontaneous. What's that? They're working on getting it on the screen. I was scheduled to preach for them, and her husband called, said, they found a brain tumor in my wife, inoperable, incurable. She's 40-some years old. They said, we need a miracle. That was November 2019. That was a few weeks ago. The tumor has disappeared. It's not there. It, it didn't get smaller. It just disappeared. And the doctor said, I don't know how that's possible. I do. It's because he's a great God. He's a miracle working God. Poor you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. We're getting so much bad news. I figured I might as well give you some good news today. I have a friend who pastors in Richmond. He's been in the hospital for 84 days. He was in a coma for over 50 days. I went to, to, to his church. He hasn't been able to have church because he's been in a coma, a small church in Richmond. And I went to be with his congregation. I said, let's just pray and believe for a miracle. While we were praying... The call came from the hospital. Brother Peter just woke up. Brother Peter opened his eyes. Brother Peter is coming home from the hospital in the next few weeks. Doctor said, I don't know how this is possible. I do. There's a God that still heals. There's a God that still does miracles. And that God is in this house today. And because he's here, anything and everything is possible if you believe it. Would you give God a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Woo. I feel revival in the house today. 
I feel the Holy Ghost in the house today. I feel like anything is possible today. Your faith has drawn heaven to the earth. That's what faith does. It activates, it pulls on Jesus until he can no longer stay on his throne. He says, I'm going to go where there's faith. And so today through our praise, through our song, through our faith, we're pulling miracles down and healing down in abundance. We're leaving. This is going to be the greatest Sunday. This is going to be the greatest week. This is going to be the great. How do you know? Because he's still a miracle worker. Hallelujah stirred up I'm trying to figure out why I'm all stirred up and then I saw Bishop's handkerchief is still here the anointing came on me over here I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord today could have chosen anywhere could have stayed home because of the slush but I said I'm going to the house of the Lord because I know that when I get in the house of the Lord, it's like the pool of Bethesda. At any moment, the angel of the Lord might come and stir the waters, and I might just be one step, one praise, one shout, one prayer away from a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm encouraged today. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm so thankful to be home today. Amen. And I'm th thankful to be at the Rock Church and to be with Bishop Ann and with Pastor John and Sister Mary and everyone else. Hallelujah. How many love their church? Amen. You know, I started uh, last year, you know, I'm an evangelist. When all the churches shut down, I didn't have a church to reopen. So I was figuring out how could I take my stand for the church and the Lord put on my heart to start having tent revivals. Now, I am, without being presumptuous, but, you know, for those of you that have heard me preach here before, you know I'm, I'm old-time Pentecostal. And, but I, I never have been to a tent revival, being honest with you. I didn't, you know, that was, you know, around my time we were in church buildings, so I'd never been to a tent revival. So I was trying to figure out how to have a tent revival, and I was in Nashville preaching, and a man said, well, I have an old tent that used to belong to R.W. Shambach. You can have that tent. And so we set up that tent in Nashville. And again, no fake humility. I didn't know if anybody would come. We said, we'll just see what happens. Well, 4,000 people came to that tent in Nashville. Over 400 people got baptized in the Holy Ghost and got healed. And I went to water baptize, and people were nervous about getting in the water. And I said, well, it's my meeting, so I'll take the risk. I got in the water. I was in the water for over four hours. I baptized 106 people in the water that night. And then Clint Brown called, and he said, let's do an Orlando revival. So I just got back from Orlando. We had thousands of people show up in Orlando. Hundreds of people got saved. Hundreds of people got healed. There's revival all over this land. you got to choose what report you're going to believe. And I'm telling you, the report of the Lord is revival, revival, revival. Blessing, blessing, blessing. Amen. There's a pastor in Florida. His name is Jim Rayley. And he said, our revenge is revival. That's how we have revenge in the kingdom of heaven. We have revival. And I know a lot of people are troubled and stirred and concerned about the season that we're living in and what we do. Well, the Lord gave me a promise out of the book of Jeremiah 29. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says to all of the captives. All of the people in exile. This means on a bad day. He's not talking to people in liberation, in the palace, and the throne. He's talking to people in exile. Here's what the Lord says. Build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens and eat the food they produce. Marry and have children. That's not talking about me. I got five kids, but that's talking about somebody else in the room. Find spouses for them so that they can have grandchildren. And it's the next part that I love the most. It says, multiply. Do not dwindle away. Another translation says, prosper. And work for the peace and the prosperity of the city where I have sent you to. So what is the response of the people of God in good times and in bad times? We prosper. We build homes, we plant gardens, we eat the food they produce, we have legacy, we don't dwindle away, we multiply, and we live in blessing. So you watch the people of God over the next 4, 8, 12, 16 years, 
We're not going to dwindle away. The church isn't going to lose its power. We're not going into a fetal position and, and accepting defeat. We're rising up strong and we're going to win souls and we're going to preach the gospel of the kingdom and we're going to have a great, great harvest of souls before Jesus comes. Do you believe it? Amen. Amen. Father, anoint me as I preach your word today in Jesus' name. I am tired of talking about the C word, so I'll try to avoid saying it as much as possible. But I am interested in how we as humans react to trauma, drama, struggle, and calamity. It's there that the true test of faith is, it, well, is given and our true faith is revealed. It, it's interesting how we react to certain things. For those of you that remember 9-11, when that horrendous attack took place in the United States, you didn't have to invite anybody to church that week. Everybody came to church. Every church was packed out. I was, I was living in Chicago at the time, attending my father's church, and that day and for about five days following, every night we were packed, even into the balcony. We could seat about I don't know, maybe 400 people, and there we had to put folding chairs out. Every night was packed out. We used to have our midweek service as, on Tuesday, and I remember that Tuesday night, jam-packed auditorium, and my father walked in from the back door, and he was a kind of matter-of-fact, plain kind of a, he's like Bishop John. He's Latino and Pentecostal, and they just can't, you know, they just say what it is. And my dad looked around the sanctuary, and he got the mic, he said, I thought you guys all worked on Tuesday nights. I mean, he just, he didn't even say, welcome to the house of the Lord. He just kind of went right for the jugular. Just, I thought you all worked on Tuesday nights. We had packed houses. And then the leadership of our nation said, we need to go back to normal. Can't let the enemy win. Let's just go back to the way things used to be. And within a week's time, the church is emptied and the stadiums filled up again. Because we have, we, we have this thing as humans of being able to just kind of move past the things that should really wake us up. Now you got to hear some of the things I'm about to say and not politicize what I'm preaching because I'm not a politician, I'm a preacher. As this season has evolved, this unique season that we've lived through, I have privately pondered why weren't we better prepared. Why didn't someone, like, leave a plan for what to do if there was a pit? Like, why didn't the leadership of 1918 and 19 say, and, like, write a book? Hey, this is what you do when a pandemic or a, or a virus or something comes to the nation. Why didn't they do that? Well, it turns out they did. But it got lost. We got over it. We forgot about it. And life moved on as if nothing had ever happened. And again, the alarm tried to go off, but we just kind of move on. And here's my message to you. I'm an evangelist. Hear my heart today. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ surely has heard the alarm sounding in the spirit right now. I mean, you don't even have to, you, you don't even have to be a, 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 a long time believer to know that the alarms, the bells, the whistles of heaven are sounding. Something is happening. But we better be careful that we don't move on from this season as if nothing happened. As if God wasn't trying to get our attention and go back to the way things used to be. Let me give you the Bible example. There was this thing called the Great Flood. And for many, many years leading up to the flood, there was a man named Noah. He was preaching and warning, building and preparing, and no one would pay attention. They would ridicule him. They would make mockery of him, but they would not pay attention to the signs of the time. And the Bible says, as the days of Noah were, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. Watch therefore, for you know not the hour which your Lord doth come. I'm not 
a politician. I'm not a strategist. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I am an evangelist of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you that what I'm about to tell you, some people will make mockery of. Some people will ridicule. Some people will say it's old-fashioned. But it might be the most important sermon that I have ever preached from behind this pulpit. Ladies and gentlemen of the Christian jury, Jesus is coming again. And you better be ready. I still believe that he's coming again. The Bible says, watch, keep watch. The New Living Translation says, you must keep watch for you don't know the day. You don't know the hour. And then it explains it this way. And Maybe they could have used a better example, but this is the way they explained it. If a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, that homeowner would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You must also be ready all the time, not some of the time, not just on the election years, not just when your kids are wayward, but you must be ready all the time for the son of man will come when it is least expected ladies and gentlemen it's not time to be sleeping spiritually it's not time to close your eyes to what's coming or what's going on in the world you need to have both eyes open your spirit needs to be alert and your soul needs to be ready because soon and very soon we're going to heaven and we're going to see our savior face to face Soon the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. And the morning's going to break eternal, bright, and fair. It's almost time. It's almost time for the saved of earth to gather over on the other shore. And I've made up my mind. When the roll is called up yonder... Not only am I going to be there, but my five children are going to be there. Every person I can influence is going to be there. I made up my mind. If I have to go alone, I'm going alone. But I've also made up my mind. I will not go alone. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As many people as I can preach to, I'm going to let them know Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And you need to get ready for the coming of the Lord. This is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. All of, all of what we've done, everything we've preached and lived for is pointing to that blessed hope. I still believe, as antiquated as it sounds, I still believe this message. When I was growing up in church as a boy, every song, every sermon was about the coming of the Lord. They made movies like Thief in the Night. They'd scare you into the kingdom. We were consumed with the rapture. And we knew he was coming again. And then it didn't happen in our time period. It didn't happen the way we thought it would. So some, somehow, some way... We stopped preaching, Jesus is coming again. We used to have a healthy fear, I'm going to call it that, a healthy fear of the coming of the Lord. Because you knew it could be at any moment. So there was no moment to let sin creep in. There was no time to rebel. There was no time to walk away from the church or get mad at the leadership or, or, or doubt. You couldn't do that. Because what if you did it and you missed the, the rapture? That's how we used to think. Every day I'd go to school, my mother would make me recite out of the book of James, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. For any man when he is tempted is drawn away by his own lust and enticed. And when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And at this point, she's poking me in the chest. And sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. I walk to school trembling, not under the Holy Ghost, but under fear. I'm like, God, don't let me die today. But there was a healthy fear. If you said the wrong thing, if you, if you accidentally let a curse word out, you were repenting right away. 
If a little sin got in there, you were finding an altar to make it right because you knew at any time Jesus is coming again. I feel the passion, the burden, the conviction in me to stir it up in the church again. We can't live any way we want to live. We can't be fighting with anybody that we want to fight with. We can't be cursing and singing at the same time. We can't be drinking the world's drink and drinking from the cup of communion at the same time because we're too close to the coming of the Lord. We need to, we need to sanctify this church. We need to be holy and right. only God can do that. But you can cry out to him and say, God, God, if there be anything in me that shouldn't be there, get it out, clean it out, wipe it out, because I want to be ready to meet you in the air. I still believe that one day, just like today, the trumpet of the Lord is going to sound. The shout of the archangel is coming from heaven. That eastern sky is going to part and there's going to be explosions all over this earth as the tombs the graves of christian soldiers are opened and people like bishop john and my late first wife jessica and and brother campbell's brother and others are going to burst from their graves and they're going to see their savior and those of us that remain we're going to be caught up to meet them in the air i still believe we're going to fly away i still believe the trumpet's going to sound it is my hope eternal nothing of this has been wasted it's been building up to a monument mental day of the coming of the Lord. So from the oldest saint in this church to the newest convert, now's not the time to play around. Now's not the time to walk away. Now's not the time to give up. It's time to hold on like you have never held on. It's time to get a hold of this word of God and say the earth shall pass away. But I still believe his word remains the same. I've been living for this day and I know it's coming. I know it's coming. It's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're getting married. Hallelujah. We're going home to see our Savior. Now that doesn't mean that we just give up on the earth and we stop having authority and dominion and blessing here. But it means that I enjoy my life here while preparing for there. I'm not living for here. I'm living for there. I live here as if that's here until I leave here and I go there. But I'm going to meet him. In the air. And any bride in this room will tell you, as you prepared for your wedding, they told you to get something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. And if you're from England, they said, and make sure there's a sixpence in your shoe. I speak to the body of Christ today. As we get ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. And out of that same old poem, I say we got to have something old in the church. We know too much. We've heard too much to let go of what we know is true. Why would we change what has always worked? Why would we give up on the ancient truths and revelations of the word of God as we prepare for this marriage supper of the lamb you gotta hold on to something old you gotta hold on to your heritage you gotta hold on to your roots the Bible says don't forget the ancient landmarks now isn't time to give up on the message of the power of the Holy Ghost it's not time to give up on the power of prayer it's not time to stop interceding and fasting it's 
It's time to pray like we've never prayed. It's time to intercede like we've never interceded. It's time to pray more people through to the baptism of the Holy Spirit than we ever have. It's time to stir the waters of baptism like we never have. We need to have a demonstration of the Spirit. We need to have the power of the Spirit. We need to lift up the name of Jesus like we have never lifted his name up. I was getting ready to preach in Orlando a few weeks ago, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to my heart, rebuked me, convicted me. Getting ready to go to the pulpit, and he stopped me and he said, Tell my people I'm still a jealous God. I share my glory with no other. And he said, you tell my people, I have heard them say the name Donald, and I have heard them say the name Joe more than I have heard them say my name. You remind my people that salvation is only found in one name. Healing is only found in one name. Deliverance is only found in one name. You make sure that you are praying and you're speaking and you're decreeing and you're declaring in that name because it's at that name that everything Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Can't let go of that. The power of the Spirit of God. The power of that name. The power of prayer. The power of consecration and holiness and righteousness. We know too much to change it. But the great battle is figuring out how to have something old and something new. How to balance the two. That just because you get something new doesn't mean you totally throw out the old. This is the great proverbial battle of every generation. No one, no, I don't think any generation has ever perfected passing the mantle. Because the previous generation is real nervous. What if, they, what if they drop it? And the, and the next generation is concerned. What if they don't give it? And so sometimes the new generation will just say, I'll just go without it. But there's too many foundational truths. There's too much legacy that we're built on here to say, I don't need anything from the old school or the old church or the old ways. It was their prayers that got us to where we are today. It was their tithing and their giving and their sacrifice that got us to where we are today. It was their consecration that brought prophetic words and revelations to this earth that got us to where we are today. I would bring, I would bring shame to his name and I would bring shame to their work if I totally abandoned the old I need the old while God is doing something new he is doing something new on this earth today it's not a new message it's new methods but it's that same message but yes he is moving in new ways I have along with many of you I have been I got to say this carefully frustrated that's a good word frustrated with social media all right. I changed. <laughs> Let's see if I get amens on this one. I changed tactics. You're going to laugh. I said, Lord, thank you for Brother Zuckerberg. I'm just calling him by faith, my brother, in Jesus' name. Thank you for Mark Zuckerberg. Because before Mark Zuckerberg... I couldn't live stream my preaching for free. But God took, you say, God, God put the, yes, because all good and perfect gifts cometh from the Father above. God put some wisdom in a man who isn't a believer to create a platform, and it's got issues, okay? But so it's television. Everything has issues. But God put some wisdom in that man to make this platform called Facebook and social media, and you know what the body of Christ did? We took it over, and we started preaching the gospel on every live stream, and, every, and now every day, every hour of the day, somewhere in the world, the gospel of Jesus Christ is being preached. We didn't have that 10 years ago. We didn't have that 20 years ago. We didn't have that 50 years ago. But God has given us something new. We have a new thing. And until they completely cancel us and censor us, I'm going to preach Jesus until the last very second that I can on those platforms. 
So I got old power and new methods. Someone said, but how are you going to reach the world with little old you? Do you know who my daddy is? He owns a lot of cows on a lot of hills. He's the best investor you've ever met. He's better than the guy that got everyone to strategize and go buy GameStop stop. GameStop stock. When my daddy says, blessing here, all the gold and the silver of heaven will come right here. When he says, I'm going to bless that nation, that country, that church, Jehovah Jireh provides everything we need. We are not operating. Look, if it was under our ability, our wisdom, and our money, I'd say, let's clean up shop and go find a forest and live there till Jesus comes. But we have borrowed money. We have borrowed authority. We are the stewards of the good and perfect gift of the Father which is above. And he has given us his power, his dominion, his authority, yes, and his money to occupy this earth until that trumpet sounds. That's why I can boldly and confidently tell you today that of the gospel of this kingdom and of his government, there shall be no end. And they cannot censor us. They cannot shut the church down. We're going to win souls like never before. So you got to have something old and operate in the new. You got to have something borrowed, but you got to have something blue. Blue symbolizes the love of God. This world, the way we're going to reach sinners, is by loving the sinner. But let, let, me, let me finish that statement, though, because everybody says that. Love the sinner. You got to love them enough to tell them they're in sin. You got to love them enough to preach this gospel. You got to love them enough to say you can't stay the way you are. When Jesus comes in, things have to change. Old habits have to die away. Old lifestyles have to disappear. We got to love them enough to tell them the truth. I got to love people enough. I was invited by a mainline denomination. I was reminiscing about this yesterday. I was invited by a mainline denomination to meet with some leaders to talk about why spirit-filled churches are growing and, ma and, and, and this particular main de mainline denomination was dying out. Now, rule number one, Brother John will tell you better than me, you got to know your crowd. I didn't know my crowd. I just assumed we all believed the same thing. I thought all Christians believed that there's a hell and a heaven. I thought all Christians believe Jesus is the only way to the Father. I just assumed if you say Christian, you believe those things. So when I went to do the seminar, they said, Pastor Tony, why is it that spirit-filled churches continue to grow? And I was just being cheeky. I was trying to be funny. I said, well... We still preach that hell is hot. And we don't want anyone to go there. So we preach with passion that Jesus is the only way. If you think there's 24 roads to heaven, then of course you wouldn't feel the passion, the conviction to preach Jesus. But I still believe there's only one way to the Father. You have to believe on him. you got to believe that he died on the cross, that he was buried for three days, and that he rose back up again. you got to confess Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. It's the only way. And i got to love this world enough to sit at every table where I'm invited. I'll go anywhere I'm invited as long as I'm, t I'm not told what I can say and can't say. I'll go to any table. I'll sit down with any person and say, I, wanna, I love you enough. I got to tell you something. 
Jesus Christ is coming again. Jesus Christ is the only way. We have to have a revival of passion for salvation. A, a revival of That's how this church came about. I know I wasn't around in the 60s. Or so. I mean, I showed up late in the game, but I know enough about your history to know that you had some founding pastors that were preaching in high schools. They were preaching to drug addicts. They were preaching to every. They were preaching to the nation. Jesus is coming again, and you need to be ready. You need to be ready. Rock Church, you know what? I'm praying for you because I do pray for you. I'm praying, oh God, I heard about those services when they would just be baptizing all night long. Lord, do it again in the Rock Church. Lord, let there be a revival of souls, a revival of evangelism. Let that God squad get so fired up for Jesus that they don't have to be invited to do soul winning. They just say, I can't stand it any longer. I want all of Tidewater to know Jesus is coming again. Would you stand with me in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. If you're here tonight, today, and Jesus is not the Lord of your life, or maybe he's the Lord of your family, but he's not really your Lord. Maybe you've walked away. Maybe life has happened, and you're just not where you're supposed to be with Christ. You have come to a non judgmental church. We don't care where you are as long as you're on, as long as you're running. The race. Everybody slips and falls. Well, Pastor, if you'd have seen how I started out, I don't even really care about how you started out. I'm more concerned about you finishing the race. And if you're here today, I know the season, I know the uniqueness of the season. But if you're here today and you say, Pastor Tony, I want to make sure that I'm ready when the trumpet sounds. I got five kids at home. It consumes me. They got to know Jesus is coming again. It'll, it'll protect them from falling into some pits of sin if they have a healthy fear. No, I can't go there. Jesus might come while I'm there. No, I can't, I can't get into that relationship. Jesus might come while I'm in that relationship. No, I can't, I can't do that. Jesus might come tonight. That'll protect you. That'll protect you you're here tonight and he's not the Lord of your life or maybe you say I need a tune up there's nothing wrong with that my wife Gina's 80, uh, 86 year old grandmother we were in a revival at my in-laws church small church in eastern Tennessee there's about 30 people in the room and the evangelist made an altar call and mother Carver 86 years young, been baptized in the Holy Ghost for over 60 years. She told me she's had the Holy Ghost for over 65 years. She came down the center aisle on a walker. And I wondered from my preacher chair, what's Mother Carver coming for? I thought maybe she needed the Lord to touch her hip, touch her knee, touch her leg. She brought herself forward on the walker. And the evangelist came down and he said, Mother Carver, what do you need of God? And she raised her hand and she said, I just need a fresh touch. And I got so convicted in my spirit. If that saint of God, who has spoken in tongues for over 65 years, if she needs a fresh touch of God, God, so do I. So there's no shame today if you say, preacher, I just need a refill. I just need a fresh touch. I just need a fresh baptism of passion to live for God. I know it's a unique season. So only if you're comfortable and if you're not, that's okay. Where you are is the altar of God. But if you're here today and you say, preacher, I want to make sure I'm ready for the coming of the Lord. 
at the count of three, I want you to join me in this altar. When you get up here, do the Pentecostal social distance. Go ahead and do the Pentecostal spin if you want to make sure there's enough room around you. If you're here today and you say, Preacher, I want to make sure that if the trumpet sounded today, I'm ready to meet him in the air. If that's you, at the count of three, I'm waiting for you in this altar. This isn't the time to patty cake with your salvation. It's not time to play with your salvation. It's time to stop giving in to human philosophies, human agendas, and human... The Bible calls it nonsense. It's time to hearken to the voice of God. If that's you at the count of three, I want you to join me in this altar. I want to pray with you. Salvation has come to your home today. One, two, three. Come now. Come now. Come now. Hallelujah. 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 I see some coming. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. Someone needs to come for their children today. I want my kids to be ready. Hallelujah. 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 that I see coming. This might be the most important service you ever came into. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming again. Brother John could tell you better than I do, than I can. That's how the early Christians would salute. That's how they would each other. Maranatha. Maranatha. Which means Jesus is coming again. It's what they were living for. It's what they lived for. It's what they died for. Jesus is coming again. I'm waiting on a few more. I see a few more people stirring back there. Maybe I can Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. No, you, you, you should. God bless you. I see you there. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. Hallelujah. They used to sing an old song. I'm not going to sing it, but they used to sing an old song that said, He's as close as the mention of His name. Today, as we pray together, this as a corporate body and we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus he is as close as the mention of his name when you call on that name he shows up to where you are I feel I feel him here so strongly right now I feel him here so strongly Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is here. Hallelujah. I think it would be healthy if all of us as a collective body would just take a moment to pray a prayer of repentance. To to ask the Lord to search our heart, to search our souls, to blot out what doesn't need to be there. You can pray in your own words. 
I want to quote the words of David out of the Psalms. Psalm 51, have mercy on us, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out our transgressions. Wash us thoroughly from our iniquities and cleanse us from our sins. For we acknowledge our transgressions. Our sin is ever before us. And against thee, thee alone, thee only, O God, have we sinned. And we've done evil in thy sight. And thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, we were shapen in iniquity and in, in sin did our mother conceive us but purge us today purge us with hyssop and we will be clean wash us and we will be whiter than snow make us hear joy and gladness and hide thy face from our sins blot out our iniquities for those of you that have come to this altar for those of you that wanted to respond but are felt more comfortable where you're standing or where you're watching you can pray with me or you can pray in your own words Lord Jesus I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I need a savior I failed you at times but I ask you to forgive me. Wash me in the blood of the Lamb. I repent of my sin. I repent of my rebellion. Come in this heart and be the Lord of my life and the Savior of my soul. I make a commitment to you, O oh God. I'm going to live ready I'm going to be ready to meet you in the air in Jesus name thank you father amen and amen would you give God praise in the house if you've never been and, and again, I don't know what the protocols are. I don't know. I'm just saying, when you can. If you've never been water baptized, you talk to the preachers of this church and you find out when they're baptizing and you go take a dip in that pool. Old man is buried and you come out a new creature. You find out when they're water baptizing and you get water baptized. If you're not sure, if you were baptized as a baby, as an infant, and you're not sure about your baptism, I'd sign up and I'd go take a fresh dip in the pool. If you've never been baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit, I'd find myself a prayer partner. I'd find myself a minister, and I'd say, help me start praying for that wonderful baptism of the Holy Ghost. It'll why wouldn't you want it? Someone said, well, do, why wouldn't you want everything the Father has for you? I'd get everything. I'd get saved. I'd get the Holy Ghost. I'd get salvation. I'd get prosperity. I'd get abundance. I'd get victory. I'd get everything the Father has for me. And one last thing before I give it to Pastor and Bishop. Father, I pray for every saint of this house, every minister of this house, every preacher of this house. Hallelujah. God, stir a passion in us to preach the gospel. Like Paul said to Timothy, stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. Father, stir us up with passion until we can no longer take sitting idly by. But we're so stirred up that we preach, we prophesy, we make disciples, we baptize, we make converts. We're so stirred up that nothing else matters but making disciples. I bless this house. I bless the leadership of this house. I bless the mission of this house. And we declare that until Jesus comes, this house, this family shall serve 
the Lord in Jesus' name. Would you give God praise? Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Wow, what a message. What a word. I feel the fire of revival stirring in the church, in our hearts. I thank God for this message today. I believe it's right on that the Holy Spirit is challenging us to remember how as the church through Christ we are set free from the philosophies of this age, from the influence of man, from the wrong focus. And we have a calling and we have a mission as the church, as the sons and daughters of the Most High God through Christ. We have been empowered and called. I love this message. I believe it's right on. In fact, it bears witness with what the Lord has been stirring in my heart for a really, really long time that, amen, it, it is time to shine bright for Jesus and to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ like never before, right now. We need to remember, amen, what the Word of God says, that being confident of this very thing, that he which hath began a good work in you will complete it. He will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Well, that means... The same God who redeems you, the same God who called you, poured out grace on your life, set you free from the power of sin and the devil, the same God, he's performing a work in your life. And you know, one great thing about the God that we serve is he finishes what he begins. He said what he started, amen, he will finish Amen. I think I preached a sermon once called God the Finisher, just showing all throughout Scripture how God finishes what he began. And in fact, also, I preached a sermon once called Live Ready, uh, amen, which reminded me a lot of this message that we have to be prepared and prepare ourselves, hallelujah, and be ready, be ready for God, get ready for the move of God, and be willing, a willing agent for the revival of fire of God to work in us and through us. Amen. Be ready and quick to share the reason for the hope that's on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Remember, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Just tell someone how you got saved. You never know. For many of you sitting here watching online, it was somebody else who told you their testimony that somehow God used to spark faith. And something began to happen on the inside of you where you were transformed by the Holy Spirit and born again. Thank God. I believe this is an hour, amen, for the church to decree that message that you must be born from above, born again. And, and amen, go tell it everywhere that God has commissioned you. Your entire family, your sphere of influence, your coworkers, your employees, uh, if you're a business owner, your boss, everywhere you go, where you work, your friends and family, let's declare that Jesus saves. Jesus is alive. I love this message. Let's give Pastor Tony a great big hand. Express our gratitude. We love you. Appreciate you. What a great word. Hallelujah. God is working. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I just enjoy this atmosphere of the presence of the Lord. Isn't it wonderful? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we have a few announcements to make. Uh, I, I know we said we would do the offering at the end, so let me just make the announcements real quick. Um, firstly, tonight at 6 p.m., we're going to have online church. Online church. If you're watching online, you can come back through the Internet and watch again tonight. In fact, uh, we'll be showing a rock classic again tonight with uh, Bishop John Jimenez. And Amen. Maybe I can find my old... Uh, uh, somewhere in my Live Ready sermon, we might do a double tonight, put that on right afterwards. Amen. I'm just reminded of that message. It's so much like this word that we heard today. Amen. And so I'll encourage you all to join with us in worship. Also this week coming up Wednesday night at 630, we'll have walk-in service again. Amen. Praying for good weather by then. Hallelujah. And it's so good to, amen, see you all in the house of the Lord. Well, just so I wouldn't forget my announcement, I happen to have in my pocket here... <laughs> The announcement sheet. Amen. So let me give you a few of these real quick. Unless, are you, are you planning to show a video? After? Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. It's not too late to join First Principles. First Principles class began today. And you can still join us at 9 a.m. next Sunday in the atrium. First Principles is our membership class. 
It runs on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. It's a live in-person class, and it's held upstairs in this atrium. And you sign up by showing up. They'll have a registration card for you. And so you can get uh, all signed up that way. Amen. And we encourage you to come out and to be a part. Hallelujah. In fact, do we have, uh, I think we might, I can't, do we have online signups for First Principles on the website? Not yet? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll work on that. We'll work on that. We'll just uh, transfer the registration form. Make it easy. You can pre-register or just show up in person at uh, www.rockchurch.org. If you've never been to our website, we encourage you to check it out. It's a great site with a lot of good information. Uh, also, we encourage you to watch us live uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, we air all of our services, and uh, they are wonderful. And you can even go back um, and, and just see uh, all kinds of great messages that have happened here at the Rock Church uh, that I know will bless you. We've had, amen, God has blessed us with um, many of the just the best His choice servants from around the world, amen, and even Brother Tony today. We've been just so fortunate and so blessed here at the Rock Church, amen. And you can rewatch some of those services right there online. Also, uh, we want to announce today that our prayer room ministry, the prayer room is open from 10 to 4, Monday through Friday, for Rock Church members. You can call 217-2146 to sign up. Again, it's 217-2146. Also, uh, there's prayer on Friday evening, corporate prayer in the main sanctuary. And I believe it is, I don't see the time, is it 6 p.m.? It says 6 p.m. on Friday evening right here in the main sanctuary. I want to thank those of you who joined us for the special call to prayer and fasting. And we had those special prayer meetings in the mornings. They were wonderful from 7 to 8 in the main sanctuary. We extended them until just this last Friday uh, on the 29th. And uh, all right, here's a couple other announcements real quick. Check out your new bulletins for upcoming events and opportunities to serve. And Pastor Ted Winsley is not going to be here next weekend because instead he is rescheduled to April the, do you have the new date? 25th. All right, so mark it down. How many of y'all remember Brother Ted? Remember the Philadelphia Eagles chaplain and the whole story? You don't remember that? You should look at the service. It was awesome. In fact, um, he gave me as a gift an autographed Philadelphia Eagle football. Now, y'all know, y'all know I'm not an Eagles fan, but it was signed by a Christian brother, so I accepted the gift, of course. I, I still have it, believe it or not. <laughs> Amen. But he has such a powerful word, very anointed man of God. He ministers uh, in the New Jersey area right next to Philly. And he's going to be here on April, you said the 25th. So mark it down. Don't miss it. I think, isn't there a men's breakfast too with that? You'll, we'll, we'll, okay, to be announced, to be announced. But we know he'll be ministering here on the 25th. Don't miss it. It's going to be absolutely awesome. All right, now I have maybe one of our most important announcements of all day. That yesterday was Pastor Robin's birthday. So Pastor Robin, I believe, is she, should we sing happy birthday to her? Is she here? I thought I heard mention that she was right there in the back. Okay. If not, um, uh, amen. We, we will all tell her happy birthday. Oh, and by the way, because, you know, I had my birthday on the 21st, and many of you were so generous and kind to send me gifts and cards. I just want to thank you for that. I want you to know when you send a card, I read every one, and I appreciate it. Amen. And not only what you wrote, you know how they print the thing? I read the whole deal. <laughs> thank you so much. You guys are so sweet, and I just love this congregation. I really want to say, no offense to other pastors, but I believe that Rock Church is the best church in the universe right here in Virginia Beach. Come on, give yourselves a great big hand. Yes, we are. Pat on the back. You might say, well, I don't know if we're the best. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to think, amen, by faith, right? We're going for it. I tell you what, we are a very, very special community and family of God. And uh, I, I love and appreciate every one of you. Uh, everybody, amen. Thank you so much. And make sure if you get a chance to wish Pastor Robin a happy birthday. Some of you already have on, online and other places. Amen. And we appreciate that so much. Amen. Well, at this time, uh, our next thing we're going to do is uh, worship the Lord through our giving. And I want to ask uh, our bishop, my pastor, to come, and she's going to share with you and encourage you, amen, in your generous gifts. Also, don't forget the special offering for our guest speaker today. We're going to do that as well. She'll tell you more about that. Give Bishop a big hand one more time. Amen. We are, I look forward to the opportunity to give. And then sometimes I get to think, and have I given all my tithe on everything that came in my hands this week or this month? Sometimes the little gifts are a birthday or somebody sends something. And uh, I, I do have a little, I want to be sure, I want to be sure I'm up to date with the Lord. I hope you feel the same way. Amen. I love to give. 
to God what belongs to him and a little bit more. Let's stand together. We're going to say our 1234 blessing, Luke 1234. Amen. Let's get on the screen. Praise the Lord. There it is. Everyone together. Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given back to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my 1234 commitment. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, discounts, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in. I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Remember, the envelope is in the front of the pew. And I want to encourage you, as Brother John just mentioned, write a little another check for a love offering for Brother Tony Suarez. We want to bless him. Amen. You may be seated, and the ushers are going to dismiss you by section.